Hello, welcome back to another Bible study about Bible prophecy. And today we're going to talk about the remnant. We started talking about the remnant in our last video, well, video number 173. And so we've spent time talking about the pre-trib rapture of the bride and what her ministry is going to be in her glorified, raptured, resurrected body. And we've talked about the mid-trib rapture of the church and what they're going to do in their resurrected, raptured body, what their ministry will be. Well, now there's a third group of saints that is talked about in the 70th week of Daniel, and that's the remnant. And if we don't understand much about the remnant, then we're going to be reading passages in the Bible, and we're not going to know who they're talking to, who they're referring to. Is that for us? Is that for another group? Is that the church? Is that the bride? I don't know. So it's really important that we understand this third group of saints that will be on the earth during the entire 70th week of Daniel. So it's interesting because John the Baptist came talking about the third rapture that will be occurring near the end of Daniel's 70th week. It's the sideways rapture of the remnant that Jesus referred to when he explained the parable of the wheat and tares. And I just thought it was very interesting because it shows us that John the Baptist, before he could start his ministry, he needed to learn Bible prophecy as well as Jesus. He needed to learn Bible prophecy before he started his ministry also. So first, I'm going to read to you what Jesus taught about the parable of the wheat and tares, and then we're going to recognize it when John the Baptist was talking about that situation as well. So we read about the parable of the wheat and tares in Matthew chapter 13, and I'm going to start in verse 24, and we'll just pick out a few verses here in that passage for the sake of time. So Matthew 13, 24, New American Standard Bible. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. Verse 25. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Verse 30. Jesus goes on to say, Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, and we learn later in that chapter that the reapers are angels, righteous angels. So he says, I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 43, then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Okay, so, for one thing, we know that the bride and the church, they are not gathered to the barn. You don't want to be the group that's gathered to the barn because that's been reserved for the remnant. Okay, so John the Baptist came speaking about the parable of the wheat and tares. And isn't it interesting that John the Baptist comes on the scene talking about the last half of the tribulation. Look at Luke 3 verse 16 and 17. John the Baptist says, One is coming who is mightier than I. His winnowing fork is in his hand to thoroughly clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So see, even John the Baptist, he's talking about those two uh, groups that will be on the earth during the second half of Daniel's 70th week. He's talking about the righteous remnant that's going to be gathered and put into the barn. And he's talking about the chaff, the tares, that are also going to be gathered and put in unquenchable fire. So when you think about it, even the, the chaff, the tares, the wicked, they get a rapture of sorts, a sideways rapture as well. It's just that they're not taken to safety. They are taken to the unquenchable, unquenchable fire. Okay, continuing on in Luke chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus said, I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. So you see, even Jesus came. He said, I came 
to kindle that fire that's going to be kindled at the end of the tribulation, that second half of Daniel's 70th week. You know, we think it's all about us. He came just to save us. Well, that's a huge component of his ministry for sure. But he cannot wait to kindle the fire that's going to burn up his enemies. So when we've got to get into the heart of Jesus and not be always making it about us. Because when we can start thinking about everything that the Trinity has on their heart, we can start figuring out more of Bible prophecy. We're not taking every verse, like so many people do, and trying to figure out how does this apply to the bride. Well, it does not always apply to the bride. Okay, now, let's talk about this group of people called the wheat that's going to be gathered and taken to the barn. Now, at this point, our group here, we don't know exactly where the barn is. We know that Satan, the red dragon, and all of his wicked angels will already be cast down onto earth. We know that the demonic realm that is under the earth, they will be up on the earth. So God is going to, he's planning on destroying all of his enemies. But he wants to get the remnant out of the crossfire first. So if all the wicked saint, if all the wicked entities are on the earth, then God's barn must be somewhere right above the mountaintops, kind of like the days of Noah, when Noah was safely tucked in an ark with a bunch of animals and food for them. Huh, kind of like a floating barn. Well, you think about it. Let me know what you come up with about where that barn might be. But now let's talk about the remnant and kind of their situation. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Okay, that is a beloved passage that we in the church, we draw great comfort from. But really, that, that passage there, it's for the remnant. It's for the saints that will be on the earth during the second half of Daniel's week. The church will already have gone up mid-trib. There will not be a church organization. The church age ends at mid-trib when the church is raptured up. But God will not leave the earth without a witness. And they are, there are going to be people who watch the church being raptured. They will see the church being raptured. That will be a testimony to them. Well, we know that remnant is going to have a really tough go during that last three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. But what I want you to take notice of right now is in Isaiah 40, 31, that verse where it says, they will mount up with wings like eagles. Well, remember Matthew chapter 13, verse 30, when Jesus was talking about he would send the reapers to gather the tares, bundle them up for the fire, but also the reapers, they're going to they're gonna gather the wheat and take it to the barn. Okay, those reapers are angels. Well, look at Isaiah 40, 31. The remnant are going to mount up with wings like eagles. So could those wings be the angels? Now, angels probably don't have flapping wings. But it looks like they can provide wind for the remnant as they're running. They're running from their enemies because they're going to be chased. Everywhere they go, they're going to be chased. But God is preparing for a, them to go to the barn. And there's going to be provision in that barn. And they're going to be provided for while God is, is fulfilling his wrath on the wicked. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at Psalm 29, verses 4 through 9. 
The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire, and in his temple everything says glory. Okay, what is going on here? Let's kind of dig in a little bit. This is not going to be an exhaustive study, but just to get you started, look there in verse 6. Syrian, that's the Hebrew word, H8303. It means sheeted with snow. So it's snow covered. A peak in Lebanon. Ah, so it's a snow covered peak in Lebanon. Well, Deuteronomy 3 9 calls it Syrian. So Syrian, when you do that word study, it means Mount Hermon. Yes, do you remember when you read the book of Enoch? Because the bride loves the book of Enoch. Fills in a lot of a lot of the mysteries for us, doesn't it? Well, that's where a pact was made during Genesis 6 when the wicked watcher angels, 200 of them, came down to earth and took wives for themselves. And they made a pact with each other on Mount Hermon. So that's kind of where that whole fiasco started. So what he's going to do here in Psalm 29 verse 6 is he's going to make the remnant, when this is all said and done, with this, when all this shakes out, he's going to give the remnant this area. And they're going to skip about like a calf. And they're going to be on Mount Hermon like a wild young ox. Okay, now it's also interesting in that psalm that in verse 7 it says the voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. Well, remember what it says in Hebrews 1 7? And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. So God is going to make the righteous angels like flames of fire. And could it be they are the ones that burn up the tares? The chaff? I think so. And while that's going on, it says in verse 9, and in his temple everything says glory. Well, that's in his heavenly temple because people, there's going to be saints, resurrected saints in heaven, in the temple, watching what's going on. They are going to be saying glory, glory. Finally, our enemies are being burned up. Because I'm thinking of all those martyred saints, all the martyred Christians that were killed for the name of Jesus Christ during that whole tribulation period, and they are given white robes and told to rest underneath the altar. Well, that's the altar of incense, and they're praying. And they don't have their glorified bodies yet, but they will be in the temple watching what's going on and proclaiming glory, glory. Oh, I love it. Okay, so we're going to end here today, although we're going to talk a little bit more about the remnant again in the next video because it's so important we know about this people group so that any time we're reading in the scriptures, you won't need a Bible prophecy teacher. You will be able to, de to determine, is God talking about the bride or is he talking about the church or is he talking about the remnant? And you will be able to make those determinations and the Bible just opens up and makes so much more sense. And this is how the bride makes herself ready for the next step of ministry once she's raptured up. All right. Thanks so much for watching to the end. I love that you're studying with us and I'll talk to you later. Bye.